Hello, my name is Bob. Welcome to a short stop on pool. Last week, those in the know had the pleasure of watching Shane Van Boning attempt to break his high run in straight pool. At the Legends of Pocket Billiards Facebook page, they were doing a live stream and Shane played basically all day and all night. He did break his high run of 304. He ran four more balls. He made a 308 ball run. Rumor is he's going to come back later and try again and I would expect him to do even better. Anyway, there was just an incredible amount of racks to choose from. So we're going to get a bonus rack this week. I chose two racks partly because Shane shoots so fast. Shane does some things really well, in my opinion, in these racks. And then I've got a couple of bones to pick with him as well. So let's get into the racks. Shane has a high break ball that's far from the rack. And this time I think he's stunning the cue ball off the rack. He's not trying to draw it. You can tell. Look at the spots on the cue ball. It's not spinning at all. So he just tried to stun it. And he did stun it, and it went to the side rail. Some percentage of time, that's going to scratch in the side pocket. Uh, but he hit it really well. He may not have expected it to come all the way back to the rail, but that was a great shot. Let's uh, pause it real quick. Notice that. There we go. Five balls in the rack area. And he, the cue ball struck the head ball on this side very full so full that the cue ball ricocheted straight back off from that ball so when he hit it full that's going to transfer the energy straight through that row and then through the bottom row and that's why you have these perimeter balls that came off and there's still uh, five balls in the uh, rack area so that's classic that's going to happen very often that's a well controlled uh, break shot Shane chose his uh, the easy shot, the ball that was hanging right in front of the corner pocket. And I agree with that. He's moving the cue ball over to check out his options. He'd have a shot on the 10 or the 14. Now what I see from here, I think is a pretty standard straight pool shot. And Shane is about to line up on this 10 ball. And that's the right shot. Some people might, might say, oh, let's shoot this 14 come off the rail and then I'll have a low angle on the 10 to go into these balls. Well, he's already got one potential break ball. He doesn't necessarily need another. But the problem with this plan is you've eliminated this ball and this ball. So now when the cue ball goes into the rack area balls, you don't have any insurance balls left. So a better plan, the one that I saw and thought that Shane was going to shoot, is shoot the 10 ball in the corner now and bring the cue ball two rails out here because both of these balls go in the lower left. And if you can get close to, you have two balls to use to, to nudge these balls over this way. And after doing so, you'll probably have a shot on the one in this pocket, or maybe the eight in the side. Possibly the cue ball will come loose and you'll have a shot on the 14. So uh, 10 ball, two rails over to this area is I think a, a shot that most straight pool players would choose and I'm curious why Shane doesn't see it because he's demonstrated a really great ability to manufacture break balls and so that is what he's looking at now he wants to try to manufacture a better break ball in a safe manner he has the six to fall back on as a break shot if he needs to this is one of the most surprising shots of the entire week of watching Shane shoot straight pool. I don't know of another uh, straight pool player that would have <laughs> played the cue ball towards the bottom rail, purposely leaving himself this long straight in shot. I don't know what that leads to. I, I guess you could stun the cue ball forward, shoot the three and nudge one of these balls over for a break shot. Is that his plan? You know, he has zero fear of shooting this 13 ball, especially into five inch pockets. And I guess if I was Shane, I wouldn't have any fear of it either. But I, that's really not the best plan for straight pool, I think. You want to shoot all easy shots. You, you had the ability to move the cue ball almost anywhere you wanted off from that 10 ball. It just seems like a strange choice to me. Okay, who am I to question Shane Van Boney? Obviously, he pockets this 13 ball in the corner pocket. And I want you to watch the 13 when it goes in. Because if I shot this, 
there's a very good chance that I'm going to brush the rail or hit one of these points. Watch that 13. Clean into the center. So who can argue with that? Okay. Now, it looks like he still has that plan because he can shoot the 15 in the side, draw the cue ball to here. It looks like that's what he's looking at, doesn't it? Then you can cut the three ball and nudge these balls over. To me, that just seems real obvious. Shane, I'm not sure what he's looking at. He doesn't see that. He is still trying to manufacture a break ball, though. So we're going to see another surprising choice. It takes Shane quite a while to decide what to do. He's off camera for uh, probably at least a minute. Look at him tapping his hand on the rail. He's just not quite sure what to do here. He wants to manufacture a better break ball. I guarantee you that's his plan. You'll see based on his next shot. Now, you, I thought he was playing shape for the 8, but he goes directly to the 14. This is his plan to use the 14 to nudge one of these balls over, and he missed them. So now he's going to plan C, I guess. He still wants to move one of these balls. I thought he was going to shoot this ball and bring the cue ball up here for the 9. No. This is his shot to send the cue ball over and manufacture a break ball. This is a 9 ball player shooting straight pool, in my opinion. Now, he hit it perfectly because he's Shane Van Boning, so he can get away with it. Um, but I don't think that you're going to get a lot of long runs, 300, 400 ball runs, playing in this manner. You've got to keep the cue ball on a tighter leash. You can't have the success of your long run dependent on your ability to, to, to play these fancier shots, like this one. <laughs> Inside power draw, up table for the nine. Okay, now what's your end pattern here, Shane? Um, this is a good place to stop and take a look because obviously this is the best key ball now. This is five ball. I'm sorry, this is the best break ball. But what's the best key ball? It's the eight. The six would probably work as well as long as you get a good angle on it. But a shot on the six, any shot on the six, easily leads to the eight. And then it's just a little drawback and you're on your break shot. And I really like... I mean, he's, he's really close to this nine ball. It's very easy to bring the cue ball down here, shoot the three, probably come two rails forward and get on the six. Is that too much cue ball movement? Possibly. But he only has five balls left, and that's kind of the pattern that I see. Alternatively, you could... Let's clear this. Alternatively, he could simply come down for the six, play the six, come here for the three and then back out here for the eight. I think either of those is higher percentage than what he does choose. Which is to shoot the eight and go to the three. Now most straight pool players are not gonna purposefully play position for such a long shot as that eight ball. Shane doesn't see it that way. He's, this table is smaller to him. All the shots are shorter to him. He's just going to make it. Now, this could have been a good key K, K3 shot, but you've got to play the cue ball sh lower on this rail so it comes out closer to the six so you have a better angle. So he got the wrong angle on his cue ball. This is the reason why this six is not a great cue ball. you got to get straight in or this angle on that six in order for it to work. So he tried to, a little bit upset at himself that he didn't get an angle, he tried to bring the cue ball, uh, just play speed control for three and a half feet off from this rail to try and land in the perfect spot for his break shot. You know, and honestly, Shane's going to achieve the perfect angle a lot of the time, but it's just a low percentage. And as we'll see in a second, it ends the run because he doesn't have the right angle. Let's go ahead and uh, fast forward. So here's his break shot, and he's got to power the cue ball forward off the rail into the rack and try and just get one or two balls loose and get a shot. And frankly, Shane hits this about as well as a human can hit it. 
it's just too difficult of a break shot and the run ends. It's a really sad place for it to end. I'm not sure if you can see this off screen. He's had 11 racks. He's on 154 balls. And he had four balls that were completely open and a great opportunity to get on this five ball for a break shot. Look how he's upset with himself and I can't blame him. But that's, the, uh, that's a little bit of what I would call Shane trying to overpower the table. In other words, he has such great shot making and cue ball control that he just he's not utilizing the best patterns. And as you can see, that's the end of the run. Shane tries to bank the seven ball and misses it by a, by a long shot. Okay, let's go and take a look at the second rack by Shane. Actually, let's take a quick look at this rack again. Right here is the decision point where Shane needed to come up with a good end pattern and he chose to draw the cue ball back up here for the nine. And in a recent rack of the week, I talked about identifying the proper failure point or tracing it back to the correct failure point. Now we might say that he didn't get out this rack because he got the wrong angle on his cue ball or because he didn't stroke the cue ball hard enough to get over on the break shot properly. Is that the failure point? Well, I would suggest no. His failure point was right here on this one ball. Because what do you think of this? What do you think of shooting the one ball now, getting a low angle on the three? Then you can send the cue ball easily up for the nine. And then from the nine, it's easy to come back down and get the proper angle on the six to use the eight as the cue ball. Now, that looks like a lot of cue ball movement. I always talk about minimizing cue ball movement. But the problem here is you have an up table ball. So the question is, when do you get the up table ball? So you could get the nine ball after the one, but that means you either have to come back down to the three to get on the six or come to the six and then use the three to get on the eight. So, you know, if you get, let's clear this. If you shoot the, the one and then the nine, so the one is gone and the nine is gone, if you get this angle on the six, then you've got to send the cue ball over here and there's no good way to, to get up on the eight. There's no high percentage way to get up on the eight. You have to get really close to straight so you can get on this side to shoot the three ball. And I think it's for that reason that the, that the pattern is best served by using the nine ball to get on the six because if you get straight or this angle or even this angle on the six, you can bring the cue ball out and back to here. And you have that shot on the eight ball, which is a much higher percentage cue ball than the six ball uh, as Shane ended up on it. So it's a matter of choosing patterns that have a much higher success rate. It's not that it, the way that Shane shot it uh, couldn't work, it could have worked. It has a lower success rate than the pattern that I just mentioned. Okay, let's go look at the next rack. Now, Shane didn't take a very good uh, close look at this. This is the first rack of a run. It's, uh, just a ball in hand bent over and shot. But we can see from here that the deflection may go off from the break shot. Oops, this way. He's going to hit that six pretty full. So this is a full draw stroke. Now, if I was shooting this break shot, I would use high right angle. I would want my cue ball to hit the six, curve to the bottom rail, and the right English is gonna check it to come straight back up. Sometimes it comes back up clear, sometimes it hits some balls from the rack. I think that's the best way to keep this uh, cue ball under control. You'll notice when uh, Thorsten and others draw the cue ball up tables. Usually the break ball is closer to the rack, but also there's a more clear carom angle where you're hitting the top of the break ball and drawing it straight up the uh, Regardless, with Shane's stroke, the shot works just fine. He does draw the cue ball straight up. Well, I'll play it again. Uh, watch the cue ball accelerate after it moves the rack. See that? Right about, from, uh, right about from here to here, it accelerated. It's pretty, pretty impressive. Now, Shane goes to the six ball immediately. I would at least consider the one on the side. 
before shooting the six, but watch where it goes. Did you notice that? Uh, just like I pointed out in the last record, Gene had that long shot up in the corner pocket. That six ball that he just shot, nice long shot. Granted, it's five inch pockets, but his the six ball did not brush the rail. It went clean into the pocket. I think it hit deep in this facing. That's the biggest part of the pocket. Shane just went to that naturally. And then on top of that, he didn't hit it softly. He stunned it forward because his next shot, he wanted a shot of the eight ball. He didn't want the cue ball up here. The cue ball this way after the eight. He wanted it to be straight in or close to straight in on that eight because he went naturally to the obvious shot which is to follow straight forward and try and make a break ball. That's what that shot was for. That's why he shot it that hard. Obviously, he had a couple of insurance balls here. Now, again, he's shooting very, very quickly in positives. Making a break ball is on his mind. And I noticed this throughout the week as Shane was playing straight forward. He really made some excellent shots where he manufactured break balls, and he's going to do it again here. But I'll make another observation, and that is this. When you are shooting this power uh, break shot, whether you're drawing the cue ball or just powering to the rack with a lot of force, you're going to find that this area and this, this area <clears throat> are less likely to have a break ball or a potential break ball for the next rack because you're spreading the balls so far balls on the break shot go to the rail, come back and you have secondary collisions. If you if you hit it with a medium hard speed, they stay here after those secondary collisions. If you blast the rack hard, they, they leave this area after the secondary collision. And that means you're going to have to make a manufacturer a break shot more often. So it's a double-edged sword. You want the balls open with no clusters, and you're going to have probably going to have to manufacture a break shot. Regardless, Shane's not the slightest bit worried. He automatically went to this pink ball in the corner and bumping the three, knowing that he would have the angle on the seven to go this way and make a break shot. Or try to make a break shot. Set this shot up on your practice table. He has a very slight angle. It's stunning forward. Put, a, put an object ball there and see how many times on 10 you can bump that ball up here for a perfect break shot. Shane is making it look easy is my point. It's not that easy to do. Now, he had the three balls, an insurance ball. But did you notice how thin of a cut shot that was and how slowly the cue ball moved? I'm going to have to pause this again because it shoots so fast. Um, if I was cutting that three ball in, my cue ball would have traveled much farther. Uh, that's really hard to do. Uh, hit that ball, a thin cut shot, so softly that the cue ball would just come up here and hit the 15 and then stop. That's not easy to do and I would have probably been looking to play position to the rail and up here knowing that I would have the 10 or if I came farther I would have the 1. So just another example of the just the excellent chop making and position play that enables Shane to go through these racks so quickly. And then he went to the two ball almost immediately because this is his break shot. Well, he's got two balls. We call this the break shot and the brother. There's two brothers. How in the world are you going to get in these balls? You know, if you play a stop shot here, you can cut this ball in the corner and bump the 14. Maybe you can bump it over and just hold the cue ball here for another shot. That would be the type of thing that I would be looking for as a way to get the cue ball here. The other alternative is short side position because both of these balls go in this corner pocket. Um, but, I mean, Shane's a great straight pool player. He recognized immediately after making uh, manufacturing this break ball that he, this is the trouble ball area of the entire table that he needed to deal with. 
So he just automatically and instinctively went to this two ball. He's going to bring the cue ball over here for short side position. Now the cue ball is off the rail, that's very important. You don't want to play the cue ball uh, straight to here because then you're, you can end up against the rail. You want to put the rail and off. And then you get that expertly, you know, avoiding the break shot. And I believe, if I had to guess, that the shot you just shot, placing the cue ball here, this is. Keeping your options open, let me pause this real quick. He's playing position on two balls at one time. Because playing playing the cue ball two rails over here, you're gonna have a shot on the ball on the side, which is what he chose, but he also had a shot on this ball. No, actually his cue ball stopped here. He had a shot on that ball as well. So options, leaving himself options. That said, once the cue ball stopped where it did and he was straight in on this ball on the side, do you see the end pattern? He gets chain, chainsaw it immediately. There's an object ball here, which leaves you almost straight in on this object ball, which is almost straight in on this one, which is straight in on this one, which is straight in on this one. Each of those balls leads naturally right to the other. It's a connect the dots pattern. And uh, Shane sees those connect the dots pattern really well. And I was surprised many, many times watching him this week. He would shoot shots and I'd be wondering, what the heck is he doing? And then I realized he saw a stop shot pattern that I didn't see. When I say stop shot pattern, it's not literally a stop shot. Like on the 11, you might need to draw back an inch or two. The point is, there's no cue ball movement here. Uh, he went to that immediately, which is, I think it's the correct play. Now, when he shoots the 11 though, he does not draw it back. He just plays, well, he did draw it back, but he didn't, he kind of stunned it to the side rather than bringing it this way. So he didn't have a stop shot for the 10 in the corner, which is why he rolls forward. No big deal. Both shots are real high percentage. Uh, and then he makes sh make sure to get an angle on the one. You don't want to get straight in on this ball because it's, it's really finicky whether you get the perfect angle or not. But if you get in, uh, whether you get dead straight or not. But if you get an angle on this key ball, it's a super high percentage to go to the rail, bounce off, and have a shot at your next break shot. So he made real quick work with that rack, probably two minutes at most. Look at Shane, he's ready to shoot right away, and I think he's going to do a power draw again. Yep, look at the cue ball take off. I don't recommend that break shot to a uh, mere mortal. <laughs> Shane can get away with it. For the rest of us, I think that with this inside angle on a lower uh, break ball, You'd be better off served shooting this with a high ball, probably high left, if you think you can get the cue ball to curve around that corner ball. I would probably opt for a stun shot, just a medium soft or a medium stroke, and just try to stun the cue ball off the rack a foot or two. It'll probably come to the side or maybe straight up table. Take a look at the results of Shane's break shot again, and once again, notice there's no potential break balls on either side of the rack, and there's still a cluster in the rack area even given how hard he stroked the ball so think about that thank you for watching and i hope you found that informative and helpful if you did please hit the like button and consider subscribing check out my book a short stop on straight pool you can find it at shortstoponpool.com and stay tuned for next week's rack of the week